Are we finally closing in on an end to the Korean War, nearly seven decades on from the end of actual fighting? Discussions are gathering momentum for an end of war declaration, something South Korean President Moon Jae-in called for last month. And US Special Representative for North Korea, Sung Kim, is going to visit Seoul this week for talks, having also recently just sat down with his South Korean counterpart, No Kyu Dok, in Washington. A meeting Kim described as excellent, as he told reporters they discussed ways to bring North Korea back to dialogue, including through a possible end of war declaration. Our intent remains the same. We harbor no hostile intent towards the DPRK, and we are open to meeting with them without preconditions. Yet there is a complex web of issues to disentangle, and it's not clear whether an end of war declaration could be made without progress in other areas. For a start, North Korea continues to provoke, as we saw with its latest ballistic missile test earlier today. The North's leader Kim Jong-un may have recently declared war itself to be the enemy, but Pyongyang remains wary of dialogue and seems unconvinced it has much to gain from the Biden administration. North Korea maintains it should be free to develop weapons like the US and South Korea, but Sung Kim stressed again this week the need to implement UN Security Council resolutions, which target the North's development of weapons such as ballistic missiles. Here, the government's also been accused of rushing things to ensure Moon's peace legacy. Though in response, Unification Minister Ian Young told a parliamentary audit session yesterday that formally ending the Korean War would be a step towards denuclearization. Even if that convinces critics, the risk for the US of formally declaring an end to the war without denuclearization progress first is that it could prematurely threaten Washington's military role on the peninsula. It's not clear how any such declaration could be worded to protect US interests and still carry weight. Another seemingly unresolvable problem is America's focus on North Korean human rights, also an area Pyongyang sees as a double standard. And you can't leave out the US nor China, given they were the main Korean War belligerents on the side of the South and North respectively, and their roles in agreeing the Korean War armistice in 1953. To add another issue, Sung Kim demanded an immediate resolution to the North's past abduction of Japanese citizens. Japan's cabinet intelligence director Hiroaki Takizawa arrived in Seoul yesterday for talks with US Director of National Intelligence Avril Haines, who also held a meeting with Sahun, the South Korean Presidential Office's Director of National Security. With Seoul-Tokyo ties strained, Japan is showing signs of a new policy direction on North Korea under new Prime Minister Fumio Kishida. While Tokyo's participation is not needed to end the Korean War, its influence could negatively affect the North's attitude given their difficult history. The two major powers with the biggest role to play, aside from the Koreas, the US and China, look set for a virtual meeting before the end of the year. They have their own problems, of course, but could find some common ground on an issue like North Korea, as war on this peninsula suits no one.